Welcome to Sports Talk, your weekly source for Hazleton Area High School football here on WYLN. And as always, it's brought to you by the Lehigh Valley Orthopedic Institute. I'm Marty Burns. I'll be joined once again by Hazleton Area head football coach Dennis Bookman. We'll have a special guest from the Cougar football team. And we'll look back at the homecoming loss to West Scranton and a look ahead to a tough road test against those Dallas Mountaineers. That's all this week on Sports Talk. Sports Talk is presented in cooperation with Lehigh Valley Health Network, Hazleton. Welcome back to Sports Talk here on WYLN, your weekly source for Hazleton Area High School football. And as always, it's brought to you by the Lehigh Valley Orthopedic Institute. I'm Marty Burns. Joined once again by Hazleton Area head football coach Dennis Bookman. And coach, uh, it, it seems like we, we, get, we start with these sad topics every week and uh, very disappointed to read uh, the Sunday edition of the Standard Speaker and, and realize that Friday night's game was the last game that would be written for the Standard Speaker by Steve Stallone. And I know somebody that uh, uh, has been by your side as far as a media member uh, since your opening day as, as head coach. And uh, um, I know Steve will definitely be missed. Oh, uh, Steve, he, he means so much uh, to our program from a, a player perspective, a coach perspective, um, a program as a whole. Um, everything that he's done to spotlight all the student athletes in our area, um, his, his support is something that I cherish dearly. Um, you know, I, he just he, he means so much to all of us. Uh, I, I told him when I spoke to him on on Thursday night, and I, I really mean this. He's he's a, a legend in terms of what he's done for Hazelton area football, and as I said, for all of our student athletes in our area, there wasn't anyone who was more positive and more supporting out there than Steve Stallone, um, somebody who definitely will be uh, greatly missed in terms of the phenomenal articles the the stories the pieces that he's done um throughout all these years uh really proud to call him a friend and um you know wish him the best on all the other things that he's going to do here i know he's going to spend time with his grandkids yep. and his kids yep. and i mean that's just that's awesome too i know how much they mean to him so uh you know steve stallone thank you so much for everything you've done and Steve, uh, you will be missed and uh, put your feet up this weekend, a, a rare weekend off uh, considering all the time you've, you've been on the sidelines riding. So uh, congratulations, Steve, and uh, we will miss you. Um, Coach, let's get to Friday night. Um, tough 41-34 loss to West Scranton. Um, to use the baseball analogy, you know, when you score, you always want that clean inning. When you come back out uh, defensively, it just didn't seem like you were able to get that clean inning, if you will. Uh, West Grant not only answered, but there were a couple of times that they answered like immediately and sometimes under a minute. Sure. Um, you know, first of all, uh, a, a much improved West Scranton team. Yes. Um, you know, Hunter Baumgartner, he's, he's a really good player. Um, Coach Manetti, his staff, they, they uh, do a really good job. But but certainly we, we felt like once again um, – we were in that same position um, as we've been the last four weeks in terms of going into the fourth quarter um, with some variation of up a score, tied, down a score, mm -hmm. whatever the case is there, um, needing needing a stop. Uh, you know, we've, we've improved. We got to a, a fourth and 11, and they converted uh, third and 13. Um, they converted, certainly put them behind the, the, the stick, so to speak, at times. Um, but they seem to have an answer. Uh, came out in the second half had our first touchback of the year first play they score um but w once again you know I, i'm i'm so proud of our our kids our program we don't quit um make it interesting at the end of the game with with an onside kick opportunity um the kids never gave in never gave up um but continuing this process of improving um we went and got even younger uh, on Friday night, had had five starters that did not play, um, which brought more sophomores on the field. And that's great because it's it's awesome game experience for them. But but certainly, um, you know, needing to be able to complement all three phases here as we move into the second half. And let's get right to the highlights from Friday night. And uh, as we have all season long, we'll go offense, defense, and get a look at some special teams. Well, let's start with the offense and uh, Brady Mazenko with a nice run. Uh, Brady Mazenko, the year he's having, so proud of Brady. He's worked so hard. Um, great job by our guys up front as well. 
And another young man that I, I think just keeps hopping on your highlight sheet week after week, uh, Coach, is Carlos Gonzalez. How about the improvement he continues to make, Carlos Gonzalez, on both sides uh, of the ball and also in the special teams game too. And a big fourth down play to start the second quarter. What an adjustment to the ball by Yo-Yo Moran. Uh, another one of those sophomores. The game he had almost a 100 yards and a touchdown. Uh, big play after big play. Austin Wilson here, too. You talk about the improvement he's made from the spring to the summer till now. Uh, the way that he values the football, first and foremost. And then the plays that he's making in the vertical game. Your first score of the night is with Brady Mazenko, and we'll get a look at it twice. Uh, great job here. Once again, it starts up front. Hunter Johnson does a great job on the kick out of the defensive end there, too. You see the excitement after. Guys just playing for one another. It's so important. Another nice run here by Brady Mazenko. Uh, big physical type run here, getting vertical now um, with that open vertical run lane. Uh, great job by Brady. Now this next play we'll look at twice, but uh, here you get Mazenko in the passing game. Uh, absolutely. Uh, a different wrinkle here um, that we knew we had this week in terms of uh, what their defensive structure was. Once again, you talk about Austin Wilson being able to put the ball on time to our receiver. Uh, big play there that sets us up for another touchdown. And we'll get a look at that touchdown, and we'll look at it twice. Uh, you know, something that we, we started to do here, being able to go under center um, a, a little bit also and get Brady a little bit deeper uh, as we have the last few weeks. And just a great job by by our entire offensive line. And, and Brady Mazenka, once he gets to the second level, he, he could definitely be a problem. And as we've said, not only can he uh, run between the tackles, but he can run to the outside. Yeah, this is something that's an underrated part of Brady's game, certainly getting to the edge, and he has the quickness and the speed. And then you see he, him displaying what he loves to do here, getting his shoulders north and being able to run through arm tackles and fall forward. And here we're going to see another touchdown. Uh, we'll look at it twice. Austin Wilson showing off his legs. Uh, sh certainly. He is a, a, a dual-purpose type player for us. Um, he's able to make plays, you know, obviously in the in the pass game, but also in the run game here. This is a great read. We talked about this all week in terms of the structure that we would have. He makes a tremendous decision here and, and scores a touchdown to be able to tie the game up 27-27. And here this time he scrambles and gets a nice run. Yeah, this is a, a, a huge third down play here. Um, great job continuing to keep his eyes downfield and feeling pressure in the pocket. Pocket awareness, he, he's become so much better at as well. Sets us up for a, a fourth and short. And here uh, when everything seemed lost, uh, as you talk about so often, your team didn't quit. Uh, certainly, and this is this is a sophomore and Yo-Yo Moran making a big time play here on a double move, being able to adjust to the ball. Uh, he continues to get better and better in practice. It's starting to be on display now on Friday nights when the lights are on and everybody's watching. And Bryant Diaz comes up with the fumble recovery, but Hunter Johnson, as he was most of the night, all around the football. Uh, I'll tell you what, Hunter Johnson, he's becoming the heart and soul of our defense here at inside linebacker. Uh, just the energy he plays with, the grit, the toughness, the emotion. Uh, I, I love Hunter so dearly for everything that he brings to our team. You know after a Friday night that Hunter Johnson left everything possible out there on the field. And here's some Team D. Uh, I love to see um, all, all the scarlet jerseys getting to the football now immediately, uh, being able to then have energy after the play. And how about the read on this play? Ashton Carlick reads it, picks off the pass, and goes for six. And, and it's another sophomore. Uh, Ashton Carlick, another guy who just continues to get better and better. Um, Yo-Yo Moran, Ashton Carlick. Jake Zabataki, Joel Vasquez, a oh, bunch of those sophomores are going to be household names here over the next few years. This is just a tremendous play by Ashton. And you talk about the progression in terms of getting that game experience and starting to be able to get a feel for things. And here on one step, he jumps in front of the bubble for a touchdown. You're down near the goal line, uh, Team D. Uh, taking pride here when a team is in the shadow of their own goalpost. Um, you see J.C. Peralta playing a new position here, scraping down the line of scrimmage. You see a bunch of other scarlet jerseys. Our defensive line being able to converge to the tackle. Guys in proper pursuit angles.
And here we'll look at this twice. A great tackle for loss by Hunter Johnson. Yeah, unbelievable play by Hunter Johnson. And then the emotion after. Uh, we talk about all the time, football. It, it, it has to be an emotionally physical game. And Hunter Johnson, he just exemplifies that. I'm so proud of him. And he just continues to get better and better and better. Uh, loves his teammates. Loves the program. Uh, loves everything uh, about putting on that Cougars jersey every Friday night. And here your special teams comes up with a turnover. Uh, Miguel Vasquez uh, was another guy who started his first game defensively. Uh, big play here as he's done in the special teams game throughout the year. Uh, rewarded here for his hard work and, and certainly a big turnover for us. And I told Coach DeMelfi he couldn't lay one up as good as this. Uh, Levi Kurtz uh, has become very valuable. We talk about how having a kicking game we feel is an X factor for our team. It's a perfect example of Hare being able to to pin West Scranton inside the one-yard line. Um, was able to be really good all night long in his placement on kickoffs as well. And also, how about some of the extra points he kicked? Uh, you know, a great job by our, our protection team as well. But Levi Kurtz, uh, I mean, in his first year playing football, has just continued to improve game to game here, and he loves it. Uh, yep. You know, I, I joke with him all the time here. We, we've we've converted a, a great soccer player into loving the game of football, and they, he would rather be nowhere else than, than in our program and around our guys at all times. Okay, we're going to take a timeout. We'll have senior Robbie Anderson joining us after the break, but before that it will be timeout with Ting O talking about injury management. All this in an action-packed Sports Talk, and then it'll continue right after this. Sports Talk is presented in cooperation with Lehigh Valley Health Network, Hazleton. Hello and welcome back to Time Out. I'm here with Ting from Physical Physical Therapy. Ting, how's it going? Doing very well. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. So we're going to talk about injury management because, mm -hmm. you know, in sports, a lot of the big things are injuries, whether it's leg, whether mm -hmm. it's arm, whether it's head, there's a bunch right. of injuries. And we're going to talk right. a little bit about injury management. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit how you like come back from these injuries. So uh, obviously it depends on the type of injury. Of course. Um, so um, every injury is different. Uh, so I'm going to talk a classical, like with football these days, yep. like a knee strain. Um, let's say you tell you medial collateral ligament, which happens often. Um, so it's a case of um, trying to protect it for the first probably about two weeks. So um, in the first two weeks, you're thinking rest, you're thinking ice, the old rice concept, if you remember, rest, ice, compression, elevation. So, but obviously get uh, you know, some, some professional advice on this. And um, at that point, you're allowed to start um, putting some stress through it again. So between two to four weeks, the injury is starting to kind of like knit together again. And then um, at that point, you want to start like doing a little bit more exercise, trying to work on some light range of motion, trying to work on some strength. And then uh, once you get to about that four to six week period is when you want to get back to, you know, trying to really get back into doing the things that you need to be able to do, whether it be football, um, basketball, or um, the winter sports like skiing. Mm -hmm. They are coming back around. Yep. So that's a knee sprain's a minor injury, but what about mm -hmm. like an ACL? Because I know that's mm -hmm. a lot of football athletes, at least yep. in the pros, I see that all too often. Yeah, yeah. So unfortunately, I've done mine. So um, I can talk from personal experience. <laughs> yeah, ACLs are pretty rough. So. ACL within the first few days is going to get pretty swollen, so it's all about swelling control. So um, within the first few days, you definitely want to ice, you want to put some compression on there and really rest up. Um, at that stage, you definitely want to consult a medical professional because you want to know if it's completely torn or if it's like partially torn. Um, and that can um, affect the management as well. I partially tore mine initially, so I actually had to wear a brace for the first three months to try and protect it for it to heal. And um, if you need surgery though, get that done as soon as you possibly can because um, obviously rehab after that can take nine to 12 months. It's a long time. Do you yeah. have any personal advice because you've suffered it yourself for mm -hmm. athletes that are going through this that might be, you know, suffering a torn ACL right now going through that? Yeah. Um, so yeah, just know it's a long process. <laughs> don't, get, don't get impatient and don't get um, frustrated because um, um, it, is, it is a year long process. So definitely listen to your healthcare professionals. Tell them what you, uh, listen to what they tell you to do because if you follow the instructions, it does definitely make it go a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Yep, follow those instructions. But yes. I'd like to thank Ting for joining me today on Time Out. We'll see you next time. Sports Talk is presented in cooperation with Lehigh Valley Health Network, Hazleton.
Welcome back to Sports Talk, your weekly source for Hazleton Area High School football here on WYLM, brought to you by the Lehigh Valley Orthopedic Institute. I'm Marty Burns, and to my far right, head coach Dennis Bookman of the Hazleton Area Cougars, and in the middle, senior Robbie Anderson. Robbie, thanks for joining us this week. No problem. Now, I, I know we've uh, talked about coach and mentioned it a couple weeks ago when you, when you had gotten injured. Uh, I haven't gotten yourself back in the lineup as of yet, but just talk about how not only in the preseason, but now as the season's progressed, and even though you're not on the field, to be a senior leader to a lot of these younger players. Yeah, so with there being very few of us, our seniors have had to step up more so than in prior years. And with me not being on the field, I've had to just focus on keeping morale up and just keeping heads up during those tough losses. And um, just talk about... You know, especially um, with uh, Jake Zabataki taking over your position at center, just talk about maybe some of the, the little things that um, you could go over with him that, you know, maybe he hasn't thought of or maybe he just isn't prepared for quite yet as being a sophomore. Yeah, so with Jake, he's a lifelong center. So he came in with some prior knowledge, but he came in kind of overthinking the position. So just simple things such as stepping right, Snapping first, that's mm -hmm. a big one with the exchange and just the small stuff that he had to clean up. And do you help, um, you know, we, we've talked uh, with Mr. Youngcourt and Mr. Calcano the last couple of weeks about mixing in with these younger guys and, and becoming a unit. Do you help out in, in trying to get that group of five to blend together as an offensive line? Yeah, so uh, we've done stuff like team, team dinners and just kind of hanging out just to kind of build that chemistry between us and build communication with each other. And we had talked about with Coach um, uh, a couple of weeks ago about film study. And, you know, uh, not only is it to prepare you for the team that you're playing, but maybe go over certain things that maybe you can't see on the field. Is that something that you you can step in and help some of the younger guys with and say, see, here's what Coach is saying about you can do this, or, you know, look for this, that type of thing? Yeah, for sure. Just like little tells linemen give off, such as like hand placement, how much pressure they have on their hands, I could kind of see that better than some of our less experienced guys. Now, Coach, I know we've talked about uh, Robbie's absence from the lineup and what it means, but uh, just talk about what, what Robbie means to this football program. Uh, he means everything. I mean, first of all, uh, on last year's team as a junior, he was one of our, if not our best, uh, defensive lineman. Yeah. Uh, this year, uh, he stepped into one of the most important positions on the field, uh, offensively at center, um, was still in the defensive line rotation as well. Um, so certainly what he brings on the field, but even more importantly, what he means to us off the field. Um, and that's never been more evident than now, that he's not able to physically play, but the leadership he provides, uh, the toughness, the love. Um, he's a high character young man. I, I couldn't be more proud of this guy right here. I truly, truly mean that. Um, I, I love him with my whole heart. Uh, you know, he, he, he's somebody that is able to keep things in perspective, and he's done a great job of communicating with all those younger guys that we have on the field. Um, he's somebody when he speaks, not only do the players listen, I listen, because mm -hmm. of the what he does and how he commands a room, um, how he commands our, our team, and, and he just loves it. He, he loves the program. Uh, he, he loves our players, loves our coaches, loves everything about Cougar football, and, and I couldn't be more thankful and grateful um, to not only have coached Robbie, but also just have been able to be in Robbie's life and be a, a part of you know his story here. Um, you know, just really, really proud of him. Well, Robbie, thanks a lot for joining us this week and uh, continued success in helping out. And, and and we're hoping to see you back out on the field soon and uh, have a great senior campaign. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll be back to talk Rich Manello and the Dallas Mountaineers right after this. Sports Talk is presented in cooperation with Lehigh Valley Health Network, Hazleton. Welcome back to Sports Talk. I've got about a minute and a half left, and uh, Coach, you head back on the road, and uh, doesn't get any easier. A very tough Dallas team. 
Uh, what uh, do you see in film that concerns you about these Mountaineers? Yeah, we've we've been reminded frequently here about uh, about Dallas over the last few days. Um, rightfully so, they're undefeated. Um, they they're a physical football team. Um, they pride themselves in the weight room, yeah. and you can see that on on film uh, certainly. But it's the playmakers that they have this year too. Uh, you know, the Zapatiki kid, a quarterback who started last year, um, has continued to develop and get better. Um, Geski runs the ball extremely hard. Uh, they have a lot of talent at, at receiver this year, and, and in their defensive backfield, um, very active, very aggressive. Uh, they're a good football team. Coach Manello's staff they they do a tremendous job. Um, we're going to their place uh, this year, um, and we're excited for the challenge. It's the second half of the year here. Um, we understand the position we're in, but our main focus is to continue to improve and get better together. Um, and, and what better place to be able to do that? We believe in our program. We want to play the best to be at our best. Iron sharpens iron. And um, in this case here, we certainly understand that we're going to get what many feel is the best team in the Wyoming Valley Conference this year. Mm -hmm. in the Dallas Mountaineers and as I said they're they're as advertised and you know we've uh, we certainly you know respect everything they do but we want to go up there and we want to compete for four quarters and we're, we're excited for the challenge and uh, your program uh, whether you're a player or coach has had a lot of big wins up at Dallas so uh, good luck Friday and maybe get another one thank you so much go Cougars go Cougars so for Robbie Anderson Head coach Dennis Bookman, I'm Marty Burns saying so long. Join us next week for another edition of Sports Talk. We'll go over the Dallas game, look ahead to another road game, which will be on WYLN against the Crestwood Comets, and another special guest from the Cougar football team. You've been watching Sports Talk, your weekly source for Hazleton Area High School football here on WYLN. As always, it's brought to you by the Lehigh Valley Orthopedic Institute.